Psycho-Cybernetics, written by Maxwell Maltz. Chapter 3, Imagination, the first key to a success mechanism. Know the truth about yourself. The aim of self-image psychology is not to create a fictitious self which is all-powerful, arrogant, egoistic, all-important. Such an image is as inappropriate and un unrealistic as the inferior image of self. Our aim is to find the real self and to bring our mental images of ourselves more in line with the objects they represent. However, it is common knowledge among psychologists that most of us underrate ourselves, shortchange ourselves, and sell ourselves short. Actually, there is no such thing as a superiority complex. People who seem to have one are actually suffering from feelings of inferiority. Their superior self is a fiction, a cover-up, to hide them from themselves and others their deep-down feelings of inferiority and insecurity. How can you know the truth about yourself? How can you make a true evaluation? It seems to me that here psychology must turn to religion. The scriptures tell us that God created man a little lower than the angels and gave him dominion, that God created man in his own image. If we really believe in an all-wise, all-powerful, all-loving creator, then we are in a position to draw some logical conclusions about which he has created, man. In the first place, such an all-wise and all-powerful creator would not turn out inferior products any more than a master, planner, master painter would paint inferior canvases. Such a creator would not deliberately engineer his product to fail any more than a manufacturer would deliberately build failure into an automobile. The fundamentalists tell us that man's chief purpose and reason for living is to glorify God, and the humanists tell us that, every, that man's primary purpose is to express himself fully. However, if we take the premise that God is a loving creator and has the same interest in his creation that an earthly father has in his children, then it seems to me that the fundamentalists and the humanists are saying the same thing. What brings more glory, pride, and satisfaction to a father than seeing his offspring do well, succeed, and express to their full abilities and talents? Have you ever sat by the father of a football star during the game? Jesus expressed the same thought when he told us not to hide our light under a bushel, but to let our light shine so that your Father may be glorified. I cannot believe that it brings any glory to God when his children go around with hangdog expression, being miserable, afraid to lift up the head and be somebody. As Dr. Leslie D. Weatherhead said, if we have our, in our minds a picture of ourselves as fear-haunted and defeated nobodies, we must get rid of that picture at once and hold up our heads. That is a mental picture, and the false must go. God sees us as men and women, in whom, through, and, in whom and through whom he can do great work. He sees us as already serene, confident, and cheerful. He sees us not as pathetic victims of life, but masters of the art of living, not wanting sympathy but imparting health to others, and therefore thinking less and less of ourselves, and full not of concern but of love and laughter and a desire to serve. Let us look at the real selves which are in the making the moment we believe in their existence. We, we must recognize the possibility of change and believe in the self we are now in the process of becoming. That old sense of unworthiness and failure must go. It is false, and we are not to believe what is in what is false. 